Good evening and welcome to E-Bible Fellowship's Bible Study in the Book of Revelation. Tonight is study number two of Revelation chapter 7, and we're going to be reading the first three verses. Revelation 7, verse 1. And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I'll stop reading there. And uh, these verses are very important, very important because they are going to establish God's overall program of salvation and judgment. God first seals his servants in their foreheads, and and that's language that uh, pictures salvation. Uh, Lord willing, at a later time, we'll we'll look at the word sealed and and we'll see how um, that ties in with uh, those that God saves. But for now, it it's just good to know that in these verses, God is indicating that the wrath of God, the judgment of God, that will come from the direction of the four winds, will not fall or as it says here, the the winds will not blow on the earth, sea, or any tree until these servants of God have been sealed. Now, this has some application to the judgment of God upon the churches. God would not bring his, his judgment on the churches and congregations until the completeness of the first fruits, the 144,000, until they had become saved. And uh, that is all those that God intended to be saved during the 1955 years of the church age had to first become saved before God would end his evangelization of the world through the churches, before he would end the church age. And that's no problem for God to do. He He orchestrated things perfectly, and he had all of his elect born at a certain time in a certain land where they would hear the gospel eventually before they died, and God saved them from the many centuries of the church age. Until finally, he saved the last one to be saved, whoever that was, and then he Uh, ended the church age. He removed his spirit from the midst of the congregations, and he loosed Satan, who had been bound for the figurative thousand-year period, and Satan entered into the congregations. And now at that point, once judgment began at the house of God, never again would another individual become saved within the churches. The first fruits had already been gathered, the 144,000, as we'll see as we continue on in Revelation 7, that that's the figure that God assigns, uh, the number that the Lord assigns to those that were saved out of the church age. And and that, again, also is a figurative number to represent the fullness of God's elect that were saved over that period of time that, that continued for almost 2,000 years. Well, here, um, again, God is speaking to these four angels or messengers that are on the four corners of the earth, and this points to the universality, to the worldwide scope of, of what's in view, and they're holding the four winds of the earth. They're They're holding back, uh, really, is what's in view. They're holding back the wrath of God 
and another angel in verse 2 ascending from the east and that's the direction uh, that is um, identified with the Lord Jesus Christ and of course Christ is likened to uh, a messenger of God he is the messenger of the covenant so um, with, without any question this other angel is Christ he's ascending from the east having the seal of the living God and and uh, that fits also since the seal uh, uh, relates to God saving individuals and it's Christ who does the saving uh, the elect of God are saved by the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ it is the work of of Christ. This is the work the Father had given him to do. And so he has or possesses the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels or four messengers to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. And, you know, that's interesting language. What does it mean, really, when God says that it's given to them to hurt the earth and the sea? How do you hurt the earth, for instance? In, in what way? What has to happen to the earth in order for it to be considered hurt? Well, um, again, Lord willing, we'll look at the word earth as we continue in the future. In, in going through these verses and, and these words, there's a lot of information, a lot of biblical information that will be very helpful to us in understanding a great many verses uh, once we properly understand this passage. And, and we uh, hopefully will understand why it was given to the four angels to hurt the earth and the sea. And again, this angel ascending from the east goes on to say in verse 3, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And the implication is, once the servants of God are sealed in their foreheads, and uh, for now, we'll, we'll just say that represents salvation. It does, and we'll show that later. But once they are sealed, or once God's elect do become saved, the implication then is that the four angels, or four messengers, may proceed to hurt the earth and the sea and the trees. And, and that's where we want to begin right now. It's with this word translated as hurt. The Greek word translated as hurt in these verses. And what does that mean? Uh, uh, what is this word pointing to? Well, occasionally this uh, particular Greek word is translated as wrong. Uh, for instance, in Matthew chapter 20, in Matthew 20, in verse 13, it says there, but he answered one of them and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Didst not thou agree with me for a penny? And this is the householder who was uh, gave payment to his laborers, and, and some were murmuring, because they had worked longer than others and all received equally a penny. And the householder is, is saying that he did no wrong to them. Well, that's the same word translated as hurt. Also, in Acts chapter 7, we, we find this word translated as wrong two or three times. In Acts 7, beginning in verse 24, and seeing one of them suffer wrong, and this is referring to Moses, he defended him and avenged him that was oppressed and smote the Egyptian, for he supposed his brethren 
would have understood how that God by his hand would deliver them. But they understood not. And the next day he showed himself unto them as they strove, and would have set them at one again, saying, Sirs, your brethren, why do ye wrong one to another? But he that did his neighbor wrong thrust him away, saying, Who made thee a, a ruler and a judge over us? So uh, in this uh, passage, we see the word wrong three times. And really, uh, when the one did wrong to his neighbor, he, he injured him, he hurt him. And this word is translated once as injured, uh, this Greek word that we're looking at, which is Strong's number 91, is translated, I think, one time as injured. And, and that's the idea. He did harm to his neighbor. And in this case, it was a physical way. But let's continue looking at this word. In Luke chapter 10, we find it translated as hurt. In Luke 10... Verse 19, it says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, in this case, the Lord is, re is speaking to his people that are going forth two by two, or they had gone forth and they return rejoicing. And uh, they had gone forth sharing the word of God. And Christ is letting them know, that, look, you'll have power or authority to tread on serpents and scorpions. And serpents and scorpions are uh, words that represent the uh, ungodly, the unsaved, or those that bring other kinds of gospels. Those that, that uh, we would say today are profess believers, and and they use the Bible, but they're, they're not true believers. They're not really God's elect, and therefore the gospel they bring is not a gospel that uh, anyone can become saved, not even when it was the day of salvation. God would not save individuals through the hearing of lies, but but he reserved that for the proclamation of the truth, the faithful uh, putting forth of the word of God. That's how God saved, when individuals would hear truth, because Jesus said, I am the truth. And so they, they would be saved by Christ, and who is or associated with lies, but Satan. And no one can be saved by Satan and, and his gospels that his emissaries bring never saved anyone. And, and yet, uh, even though true believers um, might come under, uh, for a period of time, the hearing, or, or let's put it this way, God's elect, God's elect that, um, that perhaps had not yet become saved, might for a period of time come under the hearing of false teaching or false gospels, yet it would not hurt them because God would not permit it. He would make sure that his people um, did become saved. This is a similar idea to what we find in Mark 16. Um, if you remember that passage at the end of the Gospel of Mark, Whereas uh, the Lord is speaking of the characterization or, or what will typify true believers. And, and he says in Mark 16, in um, verse 17, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Now we, we need to point out that the Greek word translated as hurt in Mark 16 is not the same word that we have uh, in our verse in Revelation or these other places we've looked. It's a very different word, but it's the same idea 
that's being expressed that God's people cannot be injured spiritually. They cannot be hurt. They cannot be killed um, by anything because, well, God um, predestinated them to salvation and he has saved them. Actually, at this point, everyone to be saved has become saved and therefore all are eternally safe and secure. There, there is no more warfare raging over whether there's, there's um, one of God's elect uh, unsaved in Satan's kingdom of darkness that needs to hear the gospel and, and Satan doing battle in order to prevent that. That's all past. That's all done. And, and so um, none of God's elect were ever hurt by the efforts of Satan and his emissaries, his representatives in the churches or without as they uh, design and brought forth other kinds of teachings from the Bible and Gospels, trying to get as closely identified with a true gospel as possible, trying to deceive and lead astray. That's, that's the ultimate purpose, to lead people off that narrow path and into that broad way, however subtly, however... Uh, deceptively, uh, Satan would try to do that. That was always the end purpose, finally, to have one of God's chosen to fail to become saved and and therefore to uh, die in his sins or her sins and to be destroyed and to disappoint God and, and to make God's program of election of none effect and and yet uh, he he failed he failed for centuries and centuries and centuries until finally it is an utter and complete failure because God's program uh, to find his lost sheep of the house of Israel has now been completed and all the sheep have been found now it's not a matter of finding sheep, which is what evangelization is all about, the sending forth of the gospel that individuals might hear and become saved and and therefore found who were previously in their sins. But now it's a matter of feeding sheep because all the sheep have been found and now it's just taking care of them and spiritually nourishing them with the truth of the word of God. Well, uh, this word hurt, that, that was the idea in Luke 10, verse 19. Nothing shall hurt you. Well, let's go to Revelation chapter 2. And here we're going to find a verse that, that really defines um, the passage that we're looking at in Revelation 7 as far as this word hurt is concerned. In Revelation 2, verse 11, it says... He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. That is, he that overcometh is someone that has overcome in Christ, as Christ overcame all to win the victory. That's what the word overcometh means, to be victorious to be the conqueror, the, the winner of the battle, and Christ did so. And all of those that are in Christ are the seed of Abraham and have overcome in him. And none of them shall be hurt of the second death. That is, that final judgment of God in which he will destroy the sinner forevermore. And and that second death begins, really, or began. Once God shut the door of heaven, he, uh, at that point, uh, guaranteed the destruction of every unsaved individual that's in the world. And, and he guaranteed that they will finally, uh, at the end of Judgment Day, 
be completely destroyed and annihilated. And that is the hurt that Revelation 7 in our verses is referring to, where first the Lord Jesus, that uh, ascending angel from the east, who has the seal of the living God, gives instruction to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, as they are messengers of God, the four angels, they will bring forth the word of God that will declare, that will pronounce the condemnation of the wicked. And it was said to them, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. Now that we are presently living in the time when all of God's elect have become saved and, and therefore sealed, well, that means we're living in the time when the four angels are no longer constrained, they're no longer bound, they're no longer held back from uh, performing this task of hurting the earth and the sea and the trees. And, uh, well, Lord willing, as we continue on, and, uh, and this is important for us to continue to look at, uh, we'll be greatly helped uh, in many passages of the Bible once we get uh, a proper understanding of what is going on here. And actually, it will help us in the coming chapters of Revelation 8 and Revelation 9. Because Revelation 8 is when um, God's wrath falls upon the churches, and Revelation 9 describes God's wrath falling upon the world. And uh, in other words, God is hurting them. And uh, he's doing so because of what is said here. First, the servants of God were sealed in their foreheads, which um, frees up the four messengers to begin uh, their task of hurting the earth. 